Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. Together we're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. This email is from Chris. Hey guys, wondering if you received any emails from other Demon students regarding lower than expected test results for the August administration. He then links to something on Reddit. That's um, called, is this a fucking joke? <laughs> is this a fucking joke? Okay. I checked this thread and I'm guessing there's some, there's a sampling bias here, but it seems pretty common. Not sure if this is out of the ordinary or completely normal as it's only my first time taking the actual exam. Nathan told me in the Thursday class, by the way, guys, if you don't know about Nathan's free Thursday class, you should, it meets every Thursday, 4 PM Pacific, 7 PM Eastern. You just need a demon free account at lsatdemon.com. Anyways, Nathan told me in the Thursday class that I was probably right within my bell curve when it came to timed sections. So my result of a 160 probably isn't much of an outlier from the mid 160 prep tests that I guess he had been getting. But there are some people who say they averaged high 160s and ended up in the 150s. <laughs> Just wondering if you could share any thoughts on this. Is there any, is any of it really out of the ordinary or surprising in any way? I have two thoughts. Sure. The first is just randomness exists. Your most test takers, except for those who like max out in the high 170s, when you get up to the high 170s, you start to have less variance in your results. Um, because you're kind of bumping up against the maximum. So you do start to get consistent when your scores are really high, like, like 99 tile high, you start yeah, yeah. to get, you start to get more consistent, but even people who average, you know, 168, they probably score 163 sometimes, and they score 173 sometimes. Um, plus or minus five around your average score is not like a crazy amount of variance. And so what happens on these Reddit threads is all the people who got the downside of variance on their official test, get pissed off and say, is this a fucking joke and have a big thread on Reddit about it. And they're just like, you know, complaining. Um, and you find other about, people who, yeah, who are in the same yeah, it's situation just, and you're just like, oh, this confirms that like right. it was a fucking Oh, joke. that always happened. Right. And then people get this false impression. Oh no. Every, you always score less. You, you, on the official test, you, you know, you should expect Look at all these to threads. score. <laughs> Dude, we see this from like pre-law advisors where they're like, yeah. well, you'll probably score a little bit lower on your official test than you did on your practice tests. Yeah. But that's bullshit. That's a hundred percent false. There's no way that that's, that that's just the practice tests are real tests. There's no reason yeah. why your real test isn't going to reflect your practice tests, but it's just one data point. So Chris, yeah, you got the downside of variance and yes, there is absolutely a sample in threads like this. Yeah. But, but my other point that I want to make is that sometimes people do weird, different shit on the day of the test. So these people on there who are like, well, I was averaging in the one sixties, but I actually scored in the one fifties. Yeah. Now we're talking about like 10 points off of what your practice tests were. And part of it could just be lying, right? Like they scored 168 two times on practice tests. And so then they say that they're averaging in the high one sixties when they really weren't <laughs> like yeah. that, that could be a thing. But even if we take them at their word, um, if, if you really were like averaging 168 and then you scored an official 158, well, then you have to figure out what you're doing differently on the day of the official test you did on those practice tests. Yeah. I've been scoring high 60s, but I feel it. I'm going to get a 178 today. I'm going to go for get a 180. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, you're not. And actually by trying to play a different game that you haven't actually demonstrated on your practice tests. Now you open the door for these outlying terrible official performances where you score 10 points lower mm. because you rushed, you tried to finish every section when you're not capable of that, or you did the opposite, just like 
quadruple checked every wrong answer on the easiest questions, you know, like didn't let it be easy. Just kind of like triple thought it too much and talked yourself out of the right answers that can happen too. But if, if that, if Chris, if you think that that feels like something you might've done, then uh, you got to solve that problem because you just, you can't do different shit on the day of the official test. You have to pretend that it's just another practice test. And that's how you are going to get a score. You increase the likelihood that you're going to get a score that's in line with your, uh, with your current practice tests. Yeah. All right. I was talking a lot. Anything you want to add to all that response? I agree. I agree. I would say it's not uncommon at all that, I mean, Hey, if a thousand people sit for the official LSAT, 10% of them are going to have a bad day. Those 10% and decent percent are going to have a really bad day. And they're also much more motivated to get onto Reddit and complain about it. Right. Right. And same thing with like, you know, Proctor, you fuck ups and shit like that. Like when, when real bad, weird stuff happens, people like to talk about it. Yep. So there's for sure. It's not uncommon at all. There is a sampling bias that makes it look more common though, than it actually is, but it doesn't have to be persistent. And it doesn't apply to most people. Yeah. You know, like you, you should expect that if, if you do a lot of practice tests, you should expect that your official test, as long as you just treat it as if it's just another practice test, then you should expect that your official test is going to go smoothly, like all of your practice tests. And then it's going to be one data point within your range. Yeah. And that's plus or minus four or five points probably from whatever your average is. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some upside variance and there's going to be some downside variance. And when you catch a piece of that downside variance, it sucks, but good thing law schools only care about your highest score. So you go take it again. Eventually, hopefully you'll catch a piece of that upside variance. Yeah. You know, and at that point it's like, well, I've been averaging 168, but on this one, I actually got a 171. And that might be the point to say, okay, I'm done taking the LSAT now because I, you know, it's in line with my results. It's actually kind of better than my typical results. Okay, great. Glad we got that one on an official test. I'm done. Yeah. Thanks for writing in, Chris. Uh, If you guys have questions about anything you see on Reddit or just anything generally, um, email daily at lsatdemon.com. Thanks for listening.